So now that we've talked about the idea behind the protocol, the, the mission of creating asset-backed currencies on a high level, um, I'm gonna try to explain how it really works. And um, before we talk about the protocol itself, I'm gonna talk about a number of different background pieces. So if you just wanna to get to the protocol description, you might skip to the next section. Um, but if you really wanna understand the background, especially if you don't have experience in finance or crypto, um, this, uh, this section should help you get up to speed. So first off, um, let's talk about how assets get tokenized. Um, so for example, uh, US dollars and gold and euros and Mexican pesos and um, some other fiat currencies have been tokenized already. And what that means is that you can go to uh, an issuer and hand over the relevant asset um, or hand over a sufficient amount of money to buy the relevant asset. Um, but let's just take US dollars. You send some US dollars to a stablecoin issuer and they send you a blockchain token that represents those US dollars. They might do something in the background where they don't exactly hold dollars. Maybe they buy treasury bills or something. Um, but what they're holding is essentially US dollars. It's very safe assets, at least it ought to be. And then that token can be transferred around, sent to anybody using smart contracts, etc. And anybody can go back to that issuer and say, hey, I want to redeem this for uh, the correct amount of US dollars. And that causes the token to be worth a dollar, right? Because anyone can convert it into a dollar. Similarly, you can have a token, and, and these exist, that can be um, uh, redeemed for gold, for, for a particular amount of gold. And so the value of that token will trade based on uh, the market value of gold as it goes up and down, because the token is redeemable for it. From a technological perspective, we could have tokenized way more by now than we have. Um, and you can sort of see that with the fiat currencies and, and, and the gold example. Um, it's pretty straightforward. There's not actually anything that's very complicated about it. The challenge is really uh, the fact that um, from a regulatory perspective, for some types of assets, it's more ambiguous whether it's okay to tokenize them, whether that's gonna take them somehow outside of the regulatory frameworks that they exist within. And so the question over the course of time of what gets tokenized, in my opinion, is largely a question of law and, uh, and rules and um, sort of the decisions we make as a society about what to tokenize and whether that's okay, really more than it is a technological question. I guess the last thing I wanna say about that is that um, I think that we will end up tokenizing pretty much all financial assets over the course of time. And that's part of why uh, I think the reserve protocol plan makes sense. But if that doesn't happen, then obviously the assets that you could put in a basket in a smart contract will be much more limited and that can be a major problem.